I'm Chef Lynn. Welcome to Flavor Secrets. With me today is Michelle Bomarito, the vivacious Michelle <laughs> Bomarito. She has so many claims to fame that it's hard to know where to begin. Mm -hmm. But you. basically she started out her culinary career in New York at the Waldorf Astoria. I'm sure that was fun in the pastry department, right? Wonderful. Yes. She's yes. been a personal chef for Michael Jordan, and so I was just wondering, could I get his number, or was how did that, <laughs> how did that work? Anything you want to say about that? You can was, say no. It was my, the most to me that was the best experience I've ever had so far. That's wow. far in my culinary culinary uh, adventures. That's awesome. Yeah. And why why is that? Just it was a great opportunity in the the respect that I received from him, and I was able to kind of learn what he liked as far as foods, you know. Mm -hmm likes and dislikes, and then I was able to prepare whatever I thought was appropriate for him. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a group of 10 men for breakfast, lunch, and dinner wow. for one week during the Ryder Cup. Not bad. No, no, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and you've also spent some time with Martha Stewart. Yes. And you've been featured on her show, and you've been in her Living Martha Stewart Living magazine. Yes. So anything you want to say about that experience? You can say Actually, no. Actually, no, absolutely. <laughs> um, there was, um, I worked for Martha Stewart for two and a half years for both the Omni Media for television and also mm -hmm. for the magazine. And honestly, just to develop in recipes that were used in her magazine, mm -hmm. with you know my name attached to hers was really it was a, quite an honor. Yeah. And um, to be invited to be a guest on her show was even more of an honor. Mm -hmm. so I'm sure that. And she was great. absolutely wonderful. Very uh, again, another woman that was uh, very kind to me, respected my talent, mm -hmm. was willing to showcase my talent on her show, and oh, that's awesome. Really made me feel comfortable. And you've also spent quite a bit of time on Food Network. I know you've been in a, a number of wedding cake challenges. Michelle yes. is one of the top wedding cake designers in the country. Thank you. And so you, you brought home a gold medal and you yes. brought, brought home four silver yes. medals, am yep. I right? Yes, yes. Well, so what was that like to, to um, be competing and, on television? <laughs> First of all, when you make a wedding cake, in my world, it's, you go into a zone and it's nice and quiet and it's very zen-like and no, nothing else. You kind of just go into those four walls and that's all you concentrate on is this art piece for a wedding. So to do it on television in eight hours publicly on national wow. television while you're being filmed and asked questions, it was the most um, grueling experience, quite honestly. And very, um, you know, you can't you can't hide your emotion if you're mm -hmm. ticked off, if you're happy, if you're sad. You just and I'm one of those girls. I'm Italian, so I'm very emotional. Mm -hmm. So they saw me cry, laugh, you know, <laughs> yell in all in one episode. But um, what it did for me personally is putting yourself on those challenges just took me to another level of what else can I do? What else can I do? Because I was. Mm -hmm. You have eight hours to create a masterpiece, which can't happen. Eight hours is on, I mean, a wedding cake usually takes like 60 to 120 hours in a week, if you really mm -hmm. think about it. So um, it brought me to another level, but I'm... So what else can I do kind of takes me to my next question to yes. you, or, or yes. what I'd like you all to know, and that's that Michelle is not actually only a pastry chef. I'm learning that there's a lot more to this little girl <laughs> than just baking wedding cakes. Well, Tell us why you made, you've made a big change now. Yes, okay, in 2006, I made like an executive life-changing decision. Um, I, I love the artistry of wedding cakes, I love it. However, I don't believe in white flour, sugar, and butter in the contents of most wedding cakes. Um, I was um, sick back in like in the 90s, and I was bedridden for quite some time, and I changed my diet with a holistic doctor who gave me some advice. Okay. And because I changed my diet, it changed my life, mm -hmm. and I stuck to this diet for over like 17 years. And to this day, I live by this holistic approach to eating, but I made wedding cakes. And it was almost like this disconnect. Even though I love the artistry of wedding cakes, I didn't believe in the contents. Please don't tell me we shouldn't eat wedding cakes. No, no, no. It's a celebration item, which is fine. Okay. Um, but um, every day, you know, mainly I, tr I try to teach people to eat whole foods and change their lifestyle as far as their diet. Um, but my point is that I decided to make this change. It took me three years to wean off of the wedding cake business. And in 2009, I completely closed my commercial shop. It was the hardest it really was it was almost like when I gave the key back to my you know my landlord it was mm -hmm. like I cried it was like such a <laughs> but I knew I had more in in my heart and I also had in my in my career path and also you're trained as a savory chef not yes. a pastry chef right 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 so, right. so I went out in the world history. yes and I, I worked I teamed up with um, the Alzheimer's Association American Cancer Association Society mm -hmm. um, Crittenden Hospital, Henry Ford Hospital, all the Whole Foods in Texas and New York and Michigan, and I teach the holistic approach to eating now. My my way of getting my way of eating when I it cured me pretty much. Mm -hmm. So I, I try to share this with the world and, and teach them my message. Okay, that's great, and that's yeah. why we're here today. Yeah. We're going yes. to make some dishes yes. using some ancient and very yes. uh, very healthy grains. Yes. So let's head over to the Flavor Perfect. Secrets Kitchen and show you what we're talking about. So here we are in the Flavor Secrets Kitchen, and we're talking about what the ink is called the Chiseya Mama, the mother of all <laughs> grains, even though as we were talking, it's not really a grain, but that's what they like to call it. Sure. A grain that's 4,000 years old, so 
show us how to cook quinoa. Okay, so this is quinoa, and what I like to do when I buy quinoa is I, um, it comes in red, black, and white. Okay. So usually I mix all three colors. Mm -hmm. And um, I dry toast it. So first I rinse it, I lay it on a sheet pan and let it dry out. Okay. And then I put the, about a medium flame, and nothing is in the pan, completely dry. And I put the grain in. And what so I this is do, a different way to cook quinoa. Most of the time it's cooked like couscous, right? With just, just kind of boiled in water for about 15 minutes. Right. So this is a nice new way to give it more flavor by toasting it? Yes, um, I like to toast the seed and uh, make it, uh, I, what I do is I hold the wooden spoon like a pencil mm -hmm. and I just go in a figure eight. So I'm making sure I get everything moving. Because if you go in a circle, you're missing the center. And if you go back and forth, you're missing the side. And right, because the, tip. Because, because the seeds are so small, you don't want to scorch them. So what we're looking for right now, I'm going to have you do this because I, I need to speak with my hands. Okay. Um, <laughs> what, um, what's going to happen is the seed's going to get so hot, so hot with this dry toast, that it's going to make a crack in the seed. Okay. And then when the liquid is added, it goes right into that crack. And then when it cooks, it has like an individual like grain, an individual, okay. um, like for, I do this with my brown rice, my amaranth, my millet. All my grains and seeds I toast first. So when you toast it, it like this, will you actually see the thread like you do when you cook? No, actually the thread doesn't water. come out until it's boiled. Okay. But it's just gonna, you're going to start to smell like a nutty aroma, mm -hmm. and then you're going to listen for a little do. crackle. There's an auditory mm -hmm. factor that comes up. So this is when you need to focus and stay, um, stay attentive to this. Okay. And it, as you know, the, the famous word in the kitchen is mise eight. en place. Oops, I was doing seven, it's, and now I'm doing eight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> mise en place. Mise en place. So everything, everything in, its place. in its place. So here is... Um, with the, with the quinoa, you need um, two cups of liquid. It can be either um, green tea, which is a great way of bringing antioxidants into your diet. Oh, I love that Or it that can idea. be a, a vegetable broth or a chicken stock or whatever you, whatever you decide that you want to do for the liquid. What about juice? Uh, what kind of juice? Like a, Orange juice or tomato juice? Or? Uh, I probably would dilute it a little bit. I think the sweetness might be a little bit too concentrated when you bring it to a boil for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know what I'm okay. saying? So yeah, I think I I'd rather do um, maybe a little dilution of um, like maybe 28 ounces of water to four ounces of juice. Okay. But um, this is this is water. It's two cups to one cup of quinoa, and then I have my um, olive so oil one. and my salt. That's everything you need. Oh, you have and pink salt there. Why? Yes, this is Himalayan pink salt. Are you mm -hmm. familiar with it? Yes. Of course you are. Um, this is my favorite salt to use. Is I use it mainly as a finishing salt. Mm -hmm. um, I love using the coarse in the grinder because then you get these little bursts of like salt crystals. Mm -hmm. This has so a pink salt because it has more minerals. Yes. Mm -hmm. well, I okay. think it's 84 to 86 minerals, which when you eat it, wow. you get energy. Ooh. So. Uh, it has a lot of. We need anymore here. <laughs> this is new Flavor Secrets Kitchen today. We got a lot of energy going on here. Okay, so what we're looking for right now is um, it's not nothing's happening right now, but you're just gonna listen for that snap and crackle. Okay. And pop. Just like popcorn. Yep. Okay. Snap, crackle, pop. Yeah. So um, I, the reason I like to use quinoa is um, I call it one of my superpower foods because it's um, it's a has a full chain of amino acids. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's it's considered a protein. It's, so it could be used instead of a meat or a chicken or a poultry or a fish or you know. So actually, really important for vegetarians too, for vegetarians, right? It's a complete protein. Yes, all by itself, it's, no it beans is, or anything. Exactly. Which it is an essential is set nice. of. <laughs> what is that? A, the essential amino acids. Yes. So um, it also is gluten free. So it's great yeah. for um, people with celiac disease. But what I like about the quinoa is when you eat it, it's like, you know, if we had if we were sitting down and everything was status quo, we did everything the same. But I had it a bowl of white pasta and you had a bowl of quinoa, mm -hmm. I would eat the white pasta and be like, oh, Lynn, I want to take a nap. And you'd be like, come on, let's rock and roll. <laughs> so um, I, this is the most basic or way. Or the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most, we're gonna, we're, I'm going to show you how to cook it the most basic way. Okay. But later on, we're going to show you how you can make different things from quinoa. Right. So it's great. Um, it's, it's great. I, I, I haven't found anyone that doesn't like quinoa. It has a real green, earthy taste. Mm -hmm. Don't you put a lot of other things with it, though? Because it's... Uh, on the scale of things, maybe just a little bit bland? Well, I drizzle, I love extra virgin olive oil, I'm okay. Italian, and uh, extra virgin olive oil in, in pink Himalayan salt, and maybe some dill weed, or some cilantro, or some whatever. kind of a real flavorful herb. Yeah, and it's also Cut great fresh in, the, the garden. in the morning. In the morning, with um, you can make it like a little bit more sweet with maybe a little bit of maple syrup and some cardamom, in, or honey and some, you know, organic milk, whatever. You, it could be like your cereal in the morning. Mm, I can smell it. That's actually a good point because it has a lot of the same properties as cereal. Right. So it would be excellent right. to have in the morning. How, however, though, it's not a grain, as we said before. It's the actually seed. the seed from the gooseblit plant. Yeah, you yes. know what a gooseblit plant looks no. like? I don't either. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure that's correct because I think I read that on Wikipedia, so I'm sure it's correct. Yeah, the amazing <laughs> thing about quinoa is um, how it is available now. It's available right. all yeah. over you see quinoa available. That's a good point. Actually, we're pretty lucky to have it because the Incas started growing this in the Andean region. Mm -hmm. um, it, 
because it grows at a lot of different altitudes, it's really great and they can, the Andy, Andean region is very mountainous. And when the Spanish conquistadors came, like they it. stopped them from growing their quinoa because they said it was Indian food. Oops, I gotta wow. keep my eight going here. And they made them grow wheat. Huh. So we're actually really lucky and it was out of favor for a long, long time, but now it's sure. coming back in because right. of exactly the things you're saying that that uh, it's just so good for you so and good it's a for complete you. protein. Yep. Does this normally take okay. this long? So is you, it my uh, no, no, no. It's it's okay. it's a pretty. Um, oh, I hear it. Yeah, right. I hear it cracking. I think you can hear it. You want to take over? No, no, it's okay. So, oh yeah. Can you hear that? I hear it. Cracking. So what you want to do right about now? Mm-hmm. I kind of I kind of go to the edge a little bit more. Like I want it to go a little bit more crackle. Because this would it also gives a nice flavor for one, and then it's also um. The color is real pretty. It gives like a, a little bit mm-hmm. of caramelization color. color. Cool. Yeah, I can smell it. It's just like so, toasting nuts, I think. Because this is such a dry, 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 like hot heat, mm-hmm. um, when you pour the liquid in, you have to be careful because it's going to steam. Right. So you're going to do it slowly. Okay. Here. Yeah. Crack. So that's actually the seed splitting. Mm-hmm. Love it. So the quinoa is kind of... <laughs> <laughs> So Don't now, forget to pour it in slowly. That's slowly, a good tip. Slowly, slowly. Now what I like to do Especially is... Especially um, if you're doing this with your kids. Um, with extra virgin olive oil, I just... A drizzle. So what's a drizzle? I'm going to say about a teaspoon. Okay. But a little drizzle. People always like to know the amount. And then you can also add um, like dehydrated herbs. You know they make those blends sure. of dehydrated herbs? Um, uh-huh. And put it in now before it comes to a boil. Otherwise you can add fresh herbs afterwards. Okay. But I like to put a little bit of um, the salt. And then Not to be confused with pink salt, which is a curing agent. Okay, right? this is Himalayan pink Himalayan salt. Himalayan pink salt. So what like I do now salt. is bring it to a boil. Mm-hmm. At the boil, we're going to lower it to a simmer, and we'll put the lid on top. 18 minutes to the T. It's unbelievable how it really works. Uh-huh. 18 minutes later, what's going to end up is going to be, uh, there's going to be no more liquid. Mm-hmm. There's going to be, the, like you said, a little coil or a little thread. Right. I think that, you know, Okay, so we'll show you that in just a minute. S, isn't it, in Morse code? Anyway, <laughs> it means stop, we're done. Okay, Lynn, so right now we're gonna turn this flame off and we're gonna look, and what you should look for, no more liquid. And what comes out is, you can see, Great, yeah. nice fluffy. Um, awesome. If we tip that oh, that's here, right. then they can see. Oh, yes, and I see this little uh, like fiber piece that comes out of it. Mm-hmm. A little coil. You see that little thread, that little coil, that's a good description. Then you know quinoa's done. Okay, so right now you could eat the quinoa as is. I like to drizzle with more olive oil, add some cayenne pepper, some salt, mm-hmm. whatever you desire, um, and then eat that by itself. Mm-hmm. It's great. But what I like to do is show you how to make an omelet. Okay. okay, okay, let's do it. Okay. So, you get your omelet pan, and I love using this because it's high heat and it won't melt. Too. Yeah. <laughs> and what I like to also use, I use coconut oil. Um, I use extra virgin olive oil as a finishing, and then I sometimes cook for a quick saute, I use olive oil. Okay. But when I'm gonna go a little bit longer, I like to use um, coconut oil because it allows me to cook the eggs and everything without the oil scorching. Okay, so it has a much higher heat point. Yes, yep. So we're gonna put the flame on, and I like to, at room temperature. Plus, is this gonna give it a little coconutty taste? It's a nice little flavor. Okay, not coconutty though, not, but just. Not strong, if you put too much, sure. But um, I just use a real small amount. Okay, we're just that around. And then what I like to do is first put um, anything that needs to cook the longest. Okay. So I, I love peas in my omelet. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna put some peas in here first. Are these fresh peas? They look good. Yeah, they're fresh peas. Yeah, awesome. Boy, if you can find fresh peas, it's really worth it. So I have my peas and then I add some fresh tomatoes. These are cherry tomatoes, mm-hmm. just kind of chopped tomatoes. into quarters. And then I love okay. walnuts. These are dry, let's see, how do you say? Raw, unsalted walnuts. Okay. And um, I keep my walnuts in the freezer. Just kind of rough chop. Rough chop. You put wal- uh, walnuts, cashews, almonds, whatever you desire. Mm-hmm. And just give us a little quick saute. Mm. This is like the country the rustic by omelet. Itself, yeah. <laughs> and then you take the quinoa. And I'm all about serving portions. So usually I do about a third of a cup. Okay. Which is like a half a tennis ball. Mm-hmm. Half a, a tennis ball. That's a, good <laughs> That's a good way to say it. And. and and again, I love um, crispy texture, so I kind of let this do its magic. Mm-hmm. And then I make a little area for the egg. 
Now, sometimes when you do omelets, you can crack the egg and whip it with the fork or a whisk and get it really fluffy, fluffy, and then add right. a little bit of water to make uh -huh. it even more fluffy. To me, I like that rustic approach, so all I do is... Um, Got some nice brown eggs here. I like to use brown eggs, too. Crack it right on top of the quinoa. Right, right on top. Okay. Not even mixed up at all. Not awesome. at all. And then... Um, Sorry. Right here. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And then you just, like you would an omelet, just let the things move around. Mm -hmm. mm, looks totally delicious. And this is something that, um, if you had everything, like, you know, again, mise en place in your mm -hmm. fridge, the quinoa was already cooked from supper the night before. Awesome. You get up in the early in the morning, you yep. cook your egg, boom, 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 you're ready to rock and roll, you eat, and you're out the door. Right. So yeah. it's a quick and easy recipe to have to, in, when you eat this, you're going to be energized for the day. Not for the whole day, but for at least the morning. So will you put your Himalayan pink salt on it again? And what I'll do pepper, is... Pepper or no? Um, yes, I'll drizzle it with extra virgin olive oil when it's done cooking. Mm -hmm. And then I'll put my I'll finish it with the Himalayan pink salt. Okay, no pepper. Okay, Lynn, so once it's all caramelized and golden brown in color, you're going to turn off the heat. And then what I like to do is... Flip it over. Flip it over. Oh, it looks so now, good. Now sometimes I put more ingredients than eggs, so like things are loose, you know, falling out uh -huh. a little bit. But that's okay. And then it's I okay. take. We just are going to name this the country almond. Exactly. And then we're going to take extra virgin almond, extra virgin olive oil. Oh, delicious. And then of course the infamous Himalayan pink salt. Yeah. You know I went out and picked some chives yes. out of my garden because I'm good. always all about garnish. But this is so pretty. You have so many different colors in it. You really don't need any garnish. But I'll just add a few on yeah, here just pretty. for a little bit more color and the taste. I, I just love ch fresh chives. I, I can't get enough of them. So there you go. Okay, so let's make sure we try this. That looks so delicious. Oh, there's a do. fork for you, of course. You have to taste <laughs> your own work. Oh, man, this looks what so appetite, good. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. The salt. Really good, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> So what do you say? Let's move on to the dill sauce. Perfect. All right, so when, what I like to do is um, take a Greek-style yogurt, and one of my favorite is uh, faye. It's spelled F-A-G-E, mm -hmm. but um, it's pronounced faye, and it's, I use the total, which is the whole milk, and it's a real thick yogurt. Mm -hmm. And then what I add is um, a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, a little bit of fresh squeezed lemon juice. Mm. Yum. Did you squeeze all that this morning? I did. That's I did. a lot. <laughs> I love, I use lemon juice, it's always on hand. Mm -hmm. I mix this around, and then I also like to use the zest of the lemon, mm -hmm. and I love using a microplane grater. Yeah. And then I wash the lemon real well, and then, then you can do this with lime and cilantro, or lemon and dill, or whatever you see fit for the season. And when you do this, you want to watch out not to get the ends of your fingers or your fresh manicure <laughs> on the grater. Don't ask me how I know that. And then I love the reamer to juice, fresh juice. Great. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna have you mix that for me. Okay. And then um, I love. Um, you're fortunate enough to. Do get I do off. it as an, in an eight? I, I mix <laughs> everything in a figure eight. Okay. But I use I'm using fresh dill today, and all you want to do is get the um, I don't know what you call this, but the leaf part mainly, uh, not really the stem. Is there a way that you pick this especially? Not really. I yeah. know people ask me all the time, is there a fast way to skin dill? I just call it skinning dill yeah, yeah, by yeah. pulling it down, but there really isn't. With right. any herb, you just have to take your time and... And it's actually kind of, it, to me, it's like methodical and relaxing and, mm -hmm. you know, you're picking the pretty too. parts. So you're just going to take a, um, a small amount and put it in like a little ball. And then I always like to hold a knife with my index finger and my thumb mm -hmm. on the blade and then the other three fingers wrap around. And then, um, I'm Italian, you know, what's the matter you, huh? <laughs> so I go like this, and then you flip it over, so you don't have to worry about chopping your fingers. And then it's just a rocking motion back and forth. And if it gets too, um, you know, too close to your hands, you put your hand up on top. So a rough chop is real good, but the, the more I chop it, the more intense the flavor of the dill. So I always like to make my dill sauce uh, like the night before, and that way the flavors merge overnight. Sure, yeah, that sounds okay. great. So we put this in here. This looks so fresh and beautiful. Yeah, it tastes real nice. nice this is smell great of for the lemon. Um, mm -hmm. when you make a roasted chicken or a roasted salmon. This is a great accompaniment. I'll mm -hmm. let you as a sauce. All yeah. right. So that's pretty much it. It's pretty basic. And then obviously, after it sits for about an hour or so, you tweak the flavors. Add, you know, you can add a little bit of salt, pepper, cayenne. Mm -hmm. There's that Himalayan pink um, salt again. Yeah, it's real nice with. Um, this is instead of like of using sour cream, you would use the yogurt. Okay. But um, capers is real I nice. I can see this in uh, on the top of a taco. Sure. For a burrito, absolutely. That's for, what I use for, for my burrito, right. sour cream for my Mexican so it's cuisine. It look, looks great. It smells so fresh. 
Okay, and what are we going to use this for today? We're going to accompany it, accompany it with the chicken. Oh, I'm Lynn, so what we have is cooked quinoa, and because he had these garden fresh chives, we're going to add those for a little bit of color and also the, the potent uh, taste of the chives is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And what I have here is a chicken breast. Then I use a meat pounder, and I usually put it inside a plastic bag, and I gently pound the chicken. And this is actually, if you can see, um, that's one breast that I, wow. I pounded. So you want to pound it. And what it does is it, it helps cook the chicken nice and evenly. Mm -hmm. So it's real nice. And then I have the three bowl method of breading. So we're gonna take some eggs. If you can whip this for me, okay. please. I can do that. And then I like to use brown rice flour as my flour. Awesome. A little bit more fiber. So what you do is you first take the chicken and you put it in the flour. Thank you. And what this is going to do is get rid of some of the moisture. So does brown rice, rice flour have more protein or less protein than AP it has, flour? Uh, well, it has a high fiber, high protein. It's a high fiber, better. high yeah. protein, okay. And it, gets a, it makes it a little bit crispier. Okay. And it has a real it nice flavor. Finer. More real like, nice almost flavor. like a cake flour. So you're just going to pack this in a little bit. And then there's the wet hand, dry, dry hand method of breading. Mm -hmm. So this is the dry hand. And then you put the wet hand like this. And you don't want this in there too long, otherwise the flour will get, make the eggs all gummy. And then you take your quinoa that's been cooled down. So what happens if you make your eggs all gummy? <laughs> it just doesn't turn we out as nice. We don't want to know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. And then all I'm going to do is just take some of the breading on top and sprinkle it. Just pack it in. So we're adding protein, we're adding nutrition, we're adding flavor mm -hmm. by adding the quinoa. And it's a nice texture when you cook it. A nice mm -hmm. crispiness. So, Lynn, if you can put the burner on for me a little okay. bit higher. And what you usually want to do is, I like to, um, once I bread the chicken, let it set in the refrigerator for maybe like five, ten minutes just to kind of hold everything together. And then when you go pan saute it, nothing falls off. Okay. Okay, so we're going to get that up to a high heat. And are we using coconut oil? We're going to use or? coconut oil for this. And excuse me for one moment. And this is an excellent breading. It's great on lamb chops. As it's, it's, it's strange as that sounds, it tastes really yummy really? on lamb chops. Huh. I wonder what it is about, oh, the, it would tone mm. down the flavor a little it's just bit. It's a real of the nice lamb. compliment. And I, I put mint in the, uh, the quinoa. Uh -huh. so we're going to do is a little bit of coconut oil. Mint in the quinoa with the lamb. Oh, I love that idea. Oh, you could also use rosemary, right? Mm -hmm. Show sure, sure. Just a tiny little bit of oil. A little bit of oil. And then you take your chicken. Now what we're gonna okay, do? So we can't blame you if this falls, if the quinoa falls okay. off because we didn't have time. Not too bad. Or just sit in the refrigerator. So we're just gonna lay this in here, and we're had the auditory factor, so we can hear it sizzle. Mm -hmm. And now Saute. because the chicken breast is so thick, we're gonna have to finish this off in the oven. So we have the oven at 375. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna let this do its thing for about two minutes, and then we're gonna flip it over, and then we're just put it in the oven and let it finish in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. So we want this to get lightly brown on each side. A golden brown. On the first side, flip it. Let it get lightly brown on the second side. Right. All right. So okay. let's go put this in the oven for 15 minutes at 375. 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, Lynn. So what we have right now is caramelization in golden brown color. Mm. We're just going to bring this over here. And then we're just going to plate this and we're going to serve this with the yogurt dill sauce that we made. Ah, looks great. Mm, it smells almost nutty. Mm. Oh, you know what? I'm going to have to use one of your pre spatulas. Okay. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Ah, delicious. It's wonderful. And then we're going to serve this with the yogurt dill sauce. I would like you put that on the top or on the side? Just a little dollop on the side. On the side. Oh, I love and that. obviously you'd have greens and reds and color of the rainbow vegetables, so it looks real nice uh -huh. and bright. Perfect. Right mm, smells great, looks great, and can I put some of my chives Absolutely. on Absolutely. I'm so big on garnish, I just like to have a little tiny bit more color. Oh, that looks great. And the chives are just fabulous this year. They're so robust and And then hard. what I like to do, again, more bombarito, oil. right? Last okay. name, Italian. Yep. <laughs> Like that, Perfect. and then of course, there's no salt. There's no salt added, so we add the salt yeah. the finisher. And this is where you can do your cayenne, your your black pepper, or any other seasoning that you know you desire. Gorgeous, beautiful. I think that will be my lunch. <laughs>
Okay. So what other kinds of things can we do with quinoa? Let's so, just talk about that for a second. Like one of my favorite things also is that, okay, you're in a rush, but you, you want to get something good and energizing for lunch. All mm -hmm. I do is take the cooked quinoa that's been cold in the refrigerator, and then you add whatever you desire. Stuff. Celery, mm -hmm. some peas. Those fresh peas again. Mm -hmm. um, cucumbers. Avocados are So this cucumber add. is skinned. Yep. Is skinned there a reason cucumber. for that or? I just, for me, it's, I just prefer to skin. More delicate. Yep. yep. Okay. And then you just toss it together. And again, you can add walnuts or almonds or whatever nut, you know, you know pecans, mm -hmm. pistachios. I think the nuts just complement the it. taste of the quinoa perfectly. And then my favorite thing to add is black eyed peas. Oh, yeah. So these have been um, soaked for a couple days. Mm -hmm. And then they've been, um, I soak them with jalapeno pepper and garlic. So Ooh. it kind of infuses a little jalapeno, bit. Jalapeno, pepper, and, and garlic. How much yeah. to beans? Uh, about one jalapeno to about two cups of beans. Okay. And Do then, you leave um, the seeds in the jalapeno? Mm -hmm, of okay. course. Yeah, yeah, okay. Spicy. If you don't want it quite so hot, you can get rid of the seeds. And, <laughs> and then about two cloves of garlic. And then let's soak uh, overnight for like two days. And then I rinse it. And then I put fresh water, bring it to a boil, lower it to a simmer. Mm. And then what you Yum. want to do is uh, cook the bean till it like, schmears really nice and easily. Schmears? Okay. <laughs> schmears. And then I add that. The schmear check. My favorite are black eyed peas because they have literally about 20 grams of protein per cup. Wow, fabulous. That's so fabulous. They're like a superfood. Mm -hmm. And then I just toss this up. And of course, the infamous extra virgin olive extra oil. Extra virgin olive oil. Mm -hmm. And I love using fresh squeezed lemon juice. Lime juice would be awesome. The Just cilantro. one quick thing about the olive oil. I, I have to ask an Italian. The best olive oil is the newest, not the oldest. Uh, I love the um, yes, yes. The cold. I like organic, extra virgin olive oil, cold pressed, okay. unfiltered. In the year, and you can check the year on the bottle to make sure that it's the current year and not an old olive oil. Okay. And wow. this is just Beautiful nice for lunch. You can take it on the road with you with a little ice pack, and then you'll be perfect. hungry and just have lots of energy. Yeah, perfect. So other things you can do with quinoa are you can make a little cake like crab, like yes. a crab cake. You could take your little salad here and put it on a toast plane or a cracker. Right. Anything else? Well, you had mentioned that you um, you you do it for breakfast. You have quinoa for breakfast with a little, maybe some honey and some yogurt and some yeah. fresh berries. Um, because it's so similar to a cereal. It really has a lot of the same properties as cereal. Or I put it in, in a fajita. It's like a filler Perfect. instead of the rice. Ooh, I love that idea. And then I also do it in um, rice paper, spring roll wrappers. Mm, yeah. And I wrap, I roll it up with you know vegetables and cheese and whatever you desire. And then you roll it up in a little thing. It's like an energizing These, snack. And you could take that along with you too. Yeah. Great. Exactly. So okay. Michelle, thanks so much for coming to the Flavor Secrets Kitchen today. It was really fun. Thank you for having learning me. Learning with you, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you very much. I'm Chef Lynn. Enjoy.